Mr. X with the Extreme Channel. Here we go, here is giveaway number one. So giveaway number one isn't happening right now, we're just talking about it. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, go ahead and check yesterday's video. We're talking about the 5K sub giveaway, and this is just one portion of it. Yes, just one. There are a lot more portions, but we're gonna go ahead and review this guy before some lucky viewer gets him. So let's do it. Mr. X with the Extreme Channel. I have Leonardo from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles here. Leonardo is the leader and this statue is made by Prime One Studios. It is one quarter scale, meaning it is one fourth the size of it is in, in real life. And it is um, $700 retail. It's completely sold out from the retailer or the uh, manufacturer. And they made 1,500 of these. So it's an addition size of 1,500. As I said in the video yesterday, you know, I purchased the turtles uh, because I love the turtles. It's, it's part of my nostalgic uh, childhood growing up and right now there's so many different options for turtles. You can get turtles from the newer movies in the uh, 21st century. You can get the turtles from the 1990s movies, which I have as well. And even now Pop Culture Shock Toys is coming out with the cartoon version of the turtles. And I think they're all fantastic. So you just got to figure out what is the best for you. This one may be free for someone, so that may be the best for them. But purchased him a while back. I don't remember where I got him or who I got him through. Typically, uh, the turtles, and I'm gonna say a lot of the, the same things in the next four days as we review each turtle, uh, they don't hold their value really well. And maybe it's for some of the reasons I talked about, who knows, and they're not that uh, expensive to start with. As I said, $700 for a massive quarter scale statue from Prime One, which the quality is amazing on this, is actually really good. Um, and you can get it even cheaper for, than that nowadays. And I don't know why it's so cheap. Maybe it's the fact that Prime, uh, the Turtles license is really cheap. Maybe the fact that just they're not um, uh, very popular. Who knows? But as I said, this is from uh, their uh, first uh, remake. Uh, they remade a movie, I think it was around 2014 or so, or 2012, and they made two of them. This is from the first movie, and this is Leonardo, the leader of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So he is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. I'm gonna use that line every day, probably. And uh, they have him in a uh, uh, museum pose, which we're gonna talk about, in the concept and design. Let's get the dimensions on him really quick. I think I covered quite a bit of the other stuff. So he's huge. Uh, that's what she said. The base is just uh, monstrous. It's almost uh, 19 inches, about 18 inches from top to bottom, even though the turtles are short. He's 21 inches to his head and the hilts on his swords give him probably another one to two inches, so 22 inches. And then deep, he is 15 inches. One of the things we're gonna talk about on here because the paint and sculpt is so good, he's good looking at him from every angle. There's some really cool features to him. Uh, there's no switch outs. However, his swords can be displayed either way, supposedly. Um, at least they are in the pictures. You can actually take his swords out like this and play with them if you want or put them in Frontwards. I have a hard time getting them to stay in there. Um, she never said that, but uh, that is an option, but I don't like that because it takes up more space. So I like them coming out of the back and it's more ninja style to me. So definitely an option with both swords. That's really the only switch outs. There wasn't a um, um, deluxe version or a exclusive edition it's just this but let's talk about just this and talk about the concept and design of this piece it's pretty basic and it's pretty similar to what you'll find in most turtles and uh, for the record I like to call them turts turts he is sitting on a New York City street above a sewer 
And the base is fantastically done. In my opinion, it's too big, so that's a problem with the concept. But he's standing there in a fighting pose. However, it's not a dynamic pose. As I said, it's more of a uh, museum pose. A museum means he's taking a picture as opposed to in the middle of an action. And he is fully decked out in his ninja gear, which we're going to talk about in a second. And his facial expression is very boring. I think that's one of the only misses on this statue, personally, besides the oversized base. Um, there's really no expression. He kind of looks bored, almost tired. But he's got his swords out. He's, uh, Leonardo is known for the swords. And one really cool thing, we talked about his uniform here. It's very uh, accurate to the movie. It's kind of a hodgepodge of uh, samurai type um, uh, clothing and then you know wraps to make it fit because he does live in a sewer so it's not like he can go to your local ninja store and buy the proper clothing so it's really he's a mix between a trashy uh, ninja sewer turtle and a elite ninja fighting machine and I like that they represented that well with the clothes which we're gonna see in the paint and the sculpt design wise uh, the base is one piece, Leonardo is one piece, minus his hands and swords. His hands actually come off via magnet, and it's not the strongest magnet. The hilts on his swords on the back, they come off as well. And that comes off too. So that's his uh, bandana. Don't worry, whoever's getting this free, it didn't break. There is no broken issues with this. There are with some of the other pieces, but you're getting it for free, so you shouldn't complain. And I don't want to stand up, because as usual, we're doing a, a uh, no pants review. But let's talk about the paint and sculpt, because I think it is phenomenal. It is really well done. And kind of an interesting fact, I might have said this in yesterday's video, I don't really know because I haven't filmed yesterday's video yet because I do weird shit like that. But uh, he actually has a lot more detail than the, one, the ones I'm keeping, than the 90s ones. And that probably means he's a better statue. I just have more of attachment to the 90s movie. But let's start at the base here. And, and it's basic, but there's a lot going on with the paint and sculpt. On the outside here, so this is kind of the underlayment, it's dirt. So it, it's really, I think they made this too uh, tall, too tall. But uh, it's cool that you can see the inside of the dirt, what would be beneath the city street. And it's a mix of colors of reds and browns and even some yellows in there and blacks. And the sculpt, it looks very, mu very muddy. Um, I like how they did that, how they pulled it off. And they even have a sewer. Uh, uh, mainline almost, you know, like a, uh, a four inch or six inch mainline coming out the front, uh, which is, you know, directly underneath that manhole. So nice little Easter egg they added. And then before we get to the top of the base here, I want to look at some of these areas they added this glistening moist effect. It looks fantastic. It looks like real water. It's this uh, clear transparent resin and it's in all these different cracks, mainly around the edges, and it just really pops. Looks really good, nice uh, part of it. And then talking about the top of the base, this looks fantastic. They did a great job with the concrete, uh, not only the cracks, and, but the texture and the, uh, uh, the pebbles that are on it. Looks really, really cool, and I like the coloring they used. They didn't go crazy with too many different colors by any means. It's kind of that uh, darker uh, brown and black, and just the little pebbles and that moist effect I talk about. I talked about really take it to that next level. Then look at this manhole cover. Looks fantastic. I really, really like this. So it does say New York City uh, sewer on it. And there's a lot of wear in it, and it has the different uh, uh, design and plate on it. And it's this copper brown and yellow, very reminiscent, very accurate. It's very large, which I think it might be a little overscaled. And there's almost a, a moist effect around that if you look at it with the right lights. And then let's get to Leonardo, because there's so much going on, starting at his feet here. First of all, uh, he has these... Uh, braided up boots around his two-toed feet. Uh, turtles only have two toes apparently. 
my son, he has a magic toe because he has two forms of polydactylism, which I'm sure he'll love that I just shared that. And it's strapped on with this rope. This entire stat statue is, is sculpted. It's not mixed media, it's not fabric, but it, a lot of times it looks like fabric. And I love the brown leather color they used and the stitching. And then that same leather uh, color is used on the straps going all the way up his uh, legs to his knees. And underneath that is some of these, like this rag, uh, almost mummy bandages to make it fit better. Maybe it uh, holds his clothes on better. Maybe it protects him, who knows, but it looks real. It's done really well. And I like how tattered and worn it is with the colors they used. And then you see a little bit of his skin right here. You actually don't see a lot of his skin, but uh, very reptilian. It's the greens and yellows, and there's this texture on it where it's almost some scales. And I know I said uh, reptilian, which she is a reptile. Turtles are reptiles. I almost slipped and said uh, uh, amphibian there. And then let's look on the inside of his crotch here. You got a couple things going on. So first he has these laces uh, that are holding together these coverings on his legs, on his right side. Looks really good and you can see some of his skin underneath it. And then on his left side he has those rags that I was talking about. And uh, they just look fantastic. They really remind me of my mummy statue from dream figures that I have. And on the outsides of his legs he has these coverings whether they're for uh, design or for protection and on the inside is kind of the this leather surface where there's some uh, wear and texture and it's all these different colors and it's on top of this really texturized uh, blue material which looks like mixed media and it's not it's done really really well adds that blue to Leonardo and then moving back to his crotch area he has kind of that same uh, towel or draper on the inside with some designs on it very samurai-like, very ninja-like. Very, very cool. And then I wanna to jump to his back because he has kind of this tattered uh, shirt or dress that's hanging around his back. This reminds me of Prime One's Doomsday Superman flag, the texture and the tears in it. It's a different color. It's these maroons and blacks, and this just looks awesome. It looks really, really good. I'm very impressed by this, and just the pictures don't even do it justice. But let's move up his back here. So first you see some leather straps that are sculpted in there that are holding everything together. And there's some wear and cracks in those and they're the browns and, and reds and the coloring look great. But then we move to his shell. His shell looks amazing. It looks really, really good. I love the different colors they used on it. I love the sculpt of it. I love the glistening effect that just takes it to the next level. My regret to this, if you display it, uh, you can't see how awesome the shell is. There's some cracks in it from battle, or, you know, damage over time. Really well done shell on the back. And then let's look at his sword hilts. Uh, they look really good. Some cool, uh, uh, you know, Japanese designs on them. They're held together by this, uh, the same bandaging that you see on his uh, legs and we're gonna see on his hands coming up. Really cool. And then moving to his torso, again, you see that's those same leather straps, a buckle on the front. And I don't even know what you'd call this, but this bamboo necklace body armor that you've seen in you know some uh, very Japanese samurai type movies. Looks really cool, kind of a, an effect on it. And you can see a little bit of his torso under it, but it looks fantastic. Again, it looks like, it doesn't look like sculpt, but it is sculpt. And then moving up his leather, uh, his really worn leather uh, sash on the front, you see some somewhere where he kind of repaired it with some uh, tape or bandages. And then a little New York City pin at the top. Cool addition and some more blue to the add, add to the statue. And then he has shoulder pads on each side and one looks like it has band-aids holding it together, which is really cool. That's where I said it's kind of that trashy, um, uh, you know, hodgepodge of clothes put together. But great looking shoulder pads. There's some of the uh, rags underneath it. Again, kind of insinuates it, this doesn't fit him properly. And then take a look at his arms. You have really that uh, reptilian skin, the scales and the greens and blacks and yellow. Looks fantastic. 
And then on his hands, they're a little bit different. One has a more of a gauntlet, but it's, it's held on by, again, those same bandages and straps that you see everywhere. Really, really cool. Then you can't really see his fingers, but he does have the traditional three fingers holding the sword. And speaking of the sword, here's the hilt. Looks good, nothing crazy. And then the blade of the sword. I think the sword length is the perfect size. Moving up to his portrait again, I think the expression is completely off. Uh, he just looks bored. Uh, however, the paint and sculpt is really good. On the top, it's that reptilian bumpy skin with the dots on it. And then the bandage, uh, his mask has different layers and different folds in it. And it's kind of a darker green, which is, you know, more movie accurate. Has his lips pursed together and there's almost a, a glistening moisten effect around that. His eyes look real. If it wasn't such a uh, boring uh, facial expression, there might be more to it. And there's a few scars, healed up scars you see on his face. I like that they added that so it's not as boring. Fantastic piece. I haven't looked at him for about uh, eight, nine months because I've had him actually not boxed up but in another room. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited to do the reviews for the next three days of all these guys. I won't be excited to give these guys up. But uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the review. Uh, you can get these pretty cheap. So if you're not the winner and you want, want it, go ahead and, and pick it up. Uh, fantastic piece. Uh, the only thing I like I said I would change I think the base takes up a little too much room it's too tall and too wide and then uh, his facial expression would be a little bit better but I like this as opposed to the out of the shadows so they made two Leonardo's one from the first remake and one from the sequel of the remake but uh, yeah if this is your first time tuning in uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button because not only do I have new stuff or old stuff but I have new stuff all the time it is Thanksgiving week. While this is going on, I'm actually not physically here. I am uh, drunk at a pool in Mexico, which I'm gonna rub in your face every single day. But uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. Take care.